you remember when you got her? You had hours and hours to just drive and dream. You spent your Saturdays fixing whatever needed fixing just to keep her running right. 20 years later, isn't it time you two got reacquainted? When you're ready, we're here. Because at LMC Truck, we know that while time may have passed, your passion for her never faded. Get her back on the road where she and you belong. In gears brought to you by LMC truck keep them on the road hey welcome to gears where we are finally ready to put a face on the stunt double project meaning the bumpers the headlights the grill that kind of thing now as you can see from the cowl back the truck is all reassembled and we've already pre-fit the front fenders but before we put those on for the last time there's some stuff that we need to do up front while we have good access to everything. I'm talking about the air conditioning and the radiator. Now, this truck came with factory air, but a lot has changed since 1986 when it comes to automotive air conditioning. For example, look how massive that system is. It not only completely filled up the dash, but it also stuck out here in the engine bay about this far, taking up all kinds of room. Now, you can get just about every part that you want to restore that old system from LMC if that's what you want to do. But converting to an aftermarket system like this one from Vintage Air will give us a better system, it'll take up less room, and it's designed to bolt right in place under the dash with only the hoses coming through the firewall. Quite an improvement. The condenser is another place you're going to see a big difference because the original looks more like a radiator than the new condenser that comes with the Vintage Air system. So, to help fill that hole, you got special brackets that just screw to the condenser and allow this to fill the area that this once did. However, to fit the new hard lines, you might need to do some minor tweaking to the core support to get everything to tuck into place like it should. Okay, the radiator is next. And there was a time not too long ago where you would take down your old radiator to a radiator shop, have it boiled out, repaired, and reuse it because replacements were expensive and hard to come by. Well, a couple of things have changed over the years. First of all, most radiator shops have closed and replacements are now available. So instead of reusing this, we're gonna go with this four row aluminum radiator we got from Frostbite. This is designed to bolt right in place in your square body truck, but we're not just doing the radiator. We're also gonna do this aluminum fan shroud and these twin electric fans. So that will suck some serious air through that radiator. And of course we have the relays and the wiring to make it happen. This combination has the capacity to cool a big V8 as it idles in traffic on a hot summer day with the air conditioning on. Far more efficient than that original radiator with its mechanical fan and big plastic fan shroud. Okay, like I said before, this Frostbite radiator is designed to bolt right into your square body Chevy truck. However, if you've upgraded to a larger big block radiator like we have, we well, might find that your stock small block mounting brackets 
might be a little bit too small to fit. So you'll either need to go to LMC and get the proper mounts or just modify these ones to fit. And if you want to keep all that aluminum looking good, <laughs> you may want to seal it up with a coat of shark hide. Okay, while we're in here, we might as well deal with the steering shaft and the steering column. And I did it has a direct replacement steering column for these square bodied Chevy trucks. Now check this out. As you can see, it has an eight position tilt, got your turn signals, got your flashers over here. You have the key on the column. And then of course, it's all pre-wired for your aftermarket or your original wiring harness. Then you can get your choice of how you want the indicators to look. And then you get all these relays to wire it up correctly because you don't want 70 amps running up your steering column. Then we also got a new steering shaft and two new U-joints, one with the vibration dampener. That's going to take the place of that stock steering shaft and that old rag link. Now, the original column in 86 had a master switch here on the side that had cruise control, it had your washers, it had your wipers, and your dimmer switch all in one master switch. And these were notorious for breaking and they don't look that great by today's standards. Now, the I did it column obviously does not come with that big master switch. So, there's some things that you're gonna have to add if you're gonna upgrade to this column. You'll need to add a dimmer switch on the floor from a 73 to 83 truck. Then you'll need to add a wiper washer switch on the dash from a 78 to 83 truck. Then you'll need to add a dash bezel from an 81 to 83 truck so you have a place for that switch to come through the dash. Then of course we're going to top off that steering column with a cool hot rod steering wheel. Now as you can see this is kind of like making a cake. You get all the ingredients right, you got something awesome. But if you get them wrong, you're going to have a mess. Now if you don't want to goof around with all of this conversion stuff, LMC also has the parts to restore your original column. So you have some options here. Once the column is in place, we'll just take some measurements. And then cut our new steering shaft to the proper length and bolt it in place. To connect the column to the transmission, we'll use a linkage kit from Locar. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of things that we took off and a lot of things that we upgraded to bring this truck up to date. We have a new cooling system and fans, we have a new heat and air system, we have a new steering column and steering shaft, and now with the inner fenders in place, we're finally ready to put the fenders on, put a face on this thing. And now, the Gladiator Search and Rescue Build, powered by Best Top. You know, it's a fact that most people keep valuable stuff like money and phones and computers and guns locked inside their vehicles. But if you have a utility vehicle, especially something with a soft top or a bed, well, it's almost impossible to keep people from slashing the top or reaching in the back and stealing your stuff. So having a lockbox in a utility rig is pretty important, and there's plenty to choose from. Take a look. If you want a locking insert for your factory console, that's what this does. If you have room to put a locking drawer under your seats, that's what this is for. There's also angled boxes for under the hood or in the bed, and if you need more storage, there's bigger boxes available that bolt to the floor or to the bed. Now, for our search and rescue gladiator, we're gonna use the lockable insert for the factory console and the big box for the bed. But whichever boxes you use, what you're looking for is something with a good locking mechanism, solid hinges, and metal construction like these from Tuffy. That way the good stuff stays in and the bad stuff stays out.
To install the console insert, it's just a matter of assembling the sides and supports under the locking lid and then bolting it all down. This way you still have the original console top portion, but underneath you can lock up stuff that you don't want people to grab. In the bed, there are several places you can mount a box depending on what you're going to use the rig for. For our application, mounting it to the floor up against the headboard is going to work best so it's out of the way, still gives us easy access to the contents. Of course, there's not much to see once the boxes are installed. They kind of disappear. Matter of fact, most people won't even know they're there. And that's kind of the point of a security box. You don't want people to know what you have, and you definitely don't want them to be able to get their hands on it. And now, Diesel Tech, brought to you by Hot Shot Secret, powered by science. You know, everybody knows that diesel engines are great. They have torque, they have power, and they last a long time, and they're expensive. So to protect that investment, you might want to consider what you're putting in the fuel tank. And that brings up the question, do you need to be running a fuel additive, or is running pump diesel fuel all you need to do? Well, let's take a look. Now, most people know that diesel fuel is less refined than gasoline, so it already has more than its share of junk in it. However, with some of the ultra-low sulfur diesels that are out there now, they can lack the lubricating qualities that are important to keep your fuel pump and your injectors working properly. Also, just like gasoline has an octane rating, diesel has a cetane rating. And the cetane rating for US diesel fuel specs is 40, but most diesels run best on fuel that has a 47 or higher cetane rating. Then there's the other junk in the fuel, like deposits and water or moisture. This stuff will find its way into your fuel system, and how you deal with them is going to determine how well your engine runs and how long it's going to last. Then finally, there is fuel stabilization. There was a time when you could start an old tractor with 10-year-old diesel fuel in it. <laughs> Not with today's diesel. It can start to go bad in a month or two unless you do something to prevent it. So what do you do? Well, you can just drive the vehicle and take your chances, do nothing, or you can sell your diesel and get a gasoline vehicle, or you can use a fuel additive, something like this Hot Shot Secret Everyday Diesel Treatment. Now, there's a lot of additives on the market, so you want to make sure and get one that's going to do the following. Add lubricity to the fuel so you don't fry the fuel pump or the injectors. Raise the cetane to give you better performance and economy. Control deposits to keep your injectors clean, separate the water out of the fuel, and stabilize the fuel for at least a year so it doesn't go bad. And of course, last but not least, is you want something you don't have to mess with all the time. Just pour it in when you fill the tank and forget about it. You know, there's no question that today's modern diesel fuels will really come alive if you use an additive. On the other hand, your diesel's still gonna run whether you use this stuff or not. But the question is, do you want your diesel to just run, or do you want it to really run? The difference is in the bottle. And now, Tuner Tech, brought to you by Bully Dog. Make your ride a Bully Dog. When it comes to changing the engine tune on your vehicle using a programmer, there's one question that invariably comes up, and that is what is the best tune to give me the towing and hauling that I want with the fuel mileage that I've got to have, with the power that I need, and it has to be something I can drive every day. Well, that's a tough thing to answer because that's like asking who makes the best ribs. I mean, it depends on a lot of things. So we're gonna dig into this question a little bit, see if we can answer it for you. On a diesel, if you're pulling heavy loads, the towing tune is gonna work best for you. However, if you're pulling lighter loads or just doing general street driving, you'll want to put the tune on one of the higher power levels. How high is really personal preference on how you want the vehicle to perform. On a gas vehicle, it also depends on the load. If you're pulling or carrying a lighter load, you can stick with an octane-based tune like 87, 91, or 93. As long as you monitor the engine temperatures and knock, and you're using the proper fuel for the tune. If you're carrying heavier loads, 
you're going to want to go with a dedicated towing tune. Now, when it comes to blending performance and economy, that's eh, a bit more tricky because as one of those goes up, the other one usually goes down. So if you go for an all-out performance tune and you drive accordingly, well, your fuel economy is naturally going to suffer. However, if you're running an economy tune and you're getting good mileage, well, you're probably not going to have the power that you want. So the best tune for both performance and economy is usually somewhere right down the middle. But the big variable is how you personally are going to drive the vehicle. If you got a heavy foot, you're going to get bad gas mileage. It's just how it is. But that's the good thing about having a programmer. You can change it whenever you want in just a few minutes, allowing you to dial in exactly what you need. And now, Parts Bin. Everybody knows that the sound your vehicle makes is one of the key factors that makes it cool. The problem is, how do you make it loud and rumbly when you're out on the interstate and quieter when you're stuck in traffic? Simple, you bolt on one of these Flowmaster Flow FX dual mode mufflers. Now this is a direct fit muffler made to bolt right in place of your stock muffler and it's basically two mufflers in one. You have the main exhaust that runs here and then when you want to open the exhaust and get more sound and performance you have an electric bypass and it runs the exhaust out this straight pipe giving you the sound you want. The best part is it's actuated with a key fob. How cool is that? This takes the exhaust cut out to a whole different level. Think of the fun you can have with that. And Flowmaster is who has it. Have you ever wondered how cool it would be to pull the distributor out of your Ford or Chevy engine and convert it to a coil on plug system like modern engines have? Well, MSD has made that possible with this direct ignition system. It allows you to pull out the original distributor and put in this system. Now here's what we have. Obviously, we have a new distributor with no plug wires, just a plug here that then plugs into this harness, which goes to the module, which controls everything. Then, as you can see, you have eight individual coils and the plug wires that go down to the plugs. This system will give you more power, more reliability, get rid of the hassles and the wear and tear of messing with that system. And for you racers, it's got rev limiter, it's got launch control, it's got all kinds of cool stuff. So if you love your traditional small block Ford or Chevy or big block Chevy, that's great. Don't swap the engine, swap the ignition to MSD Direct Ignition System. You don't have to look very hard to see that the 78 through 87 General Motors G-Body cars are getting more popular every day as they are the perfect candidate for an LS swap. The problem is virtually all of those vehicles came from the factory with an automatic transmission. Fortunately, American Powertrain decided to do something about that and they've come out with this conversion kit that will allow you to put a five or six speed Tremec into your 80s Monte Carlo, Regal, Cutlass, Grand Prix, that kind of thing. Now, what you get is a heavy duty adjustable cross member that will allow you to fit a three inch exhaust system you have the bracket to mount the new clutch master cylinder. You have that all important third pedal. And of course you have the hydraulic release bearing kit that they have. Now, if you don't have a transmission, they can set you up with a Tremec five or six speed. They can get you a performance clutch. Heck, they even do drive shafts. So if you have an 80s G body and you really want to shift the gears in it, American Powertrain can make that a reality. What are you working on? Brought to you by Woodward Fabrication, selling quality metal working equipment since 1966. Today's What Are You Working On comes from Walter Gaucha from Wisconsin, and his project is a 1957 Ford panel. Yeah, very similar to what we got back here. Now, here is a picture of his project. Now, that is not Walter in the back, that is Walter's dad. 
Walter is the little guy up by the front tire. He is four years old in this picture, and that is the day that his dad sold the truck 25 years ago to put down money on a house. Okay, well, Walter grew up with memories of that truck. So, 25 years later, he decided he was going to try to find it. So he managed to locate the current owner, who ironically had done very little to change the truck, and he managed to work out a deal. Look at it, here it is. Now, some of the details that his dad did on the truck, as you can see, it's got a Chevelle front clip underneath it. It's got a small block Chevy in it. Suicide doors with shaved handles. It's got a reverse tilt opening hood. And of course, that 80s style paint job, which honestly is really cool now. The best part is, as you can see, they recreated the original picture. And everybody wants to know, Walter, where did you find those little cutoff overalls and how in the world did you fit into them? Man, this is a great project. And to recognize that, we hooked up with our buddies at Woodward Fab and we're gonna give you one of these shears because that's always nice to have around the shop. Then, since you're obviously a gearhead, we're gonna give you one of our gears t-shirts and we're gonna give you one of our project planning books. Now, I know you already have one of these. This is for your next project. Keep track of what you're doing on it. Also, we're gonna give you a gift card from LMC Truck because I guarantee you, you're gonna need some parts out of this catalog for that truck. And then finally, we're gonna give you one of our Gears tow trucks because everybody needs a tow truck. Now, for the rest of you guys, if you wanna get in on this, get your project featured on the show, go to the website, go to Gears Nation, and submit it into what you're working on. The website's also the place to find out more information on any products you may have seen on the show, any Gears merchandise, and how to join Gears Nation so you can stream any of our episodes commercial free. Also, don't forget to check us out on Amazon Prime where you can watch past and current seasons of Gears and check out our new show, Stacy David's Restoration Series. Finally, don't forget to like us on Facebook and Instagram so you can get some behind the scenes footage of our weekly web series, Shifting Gears. And if you're a radio person, make sure you check out our new podcast, Tales of a Gearhead. All right, that wraps it up for us today. I've got a square body to finish putting together. Walter's got a truck that he can go out and enjoy. And if you're feeling left out, well, it's up to you to go out there, find yourself something to work on and get on it. We'll see you next time.